Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you, and welcome to our family church service. Why don't you look around in somebody, give them a high five, smile, or uh, do a traditional handshake. Make sure everybody feels welcome. It really is great to see you, and also as well our live stream family. Uh, welcome to you as well. Are we on this camera? I can't see any red lights. So I look at that camera. Welcome to you, all our live streamers. <laughs> this is playing about with the pastor time, this is. Gerald, behave yourself out there. Welcome to you as well. We hope you're doing well. And uh, you feel very much part of our family service today. And also, welcome to our amazing Epic Children and Epic Team. Give them a big round of applause. They are amazing. They're going to have a great time today. Welcome to Bob Norby. Give him a big round of applause. He's our speaker today. Also, welcome to Steve Ball and his wife, Helen. Give them a big welcome today. Yeah, there's been some miscommunication, and I have to put my hand up and take the blame for this. I won't go into too much de detail, but I've been and done it again. I do apologize. I was originally, we had you booked for next week, Steve, didn't we? Please just agree with that a little bit. That's true, isn't it? <laughs> and then you had to change it because of certain things. And um, I changed it in one of my diaries, but not my phone diary. No, I didn't. I, yeah, or vice versa. Well, I think I got it right in my phone diary, but not in the diary that I do the preaching rotas. So I'm here yesterday uh, overseeing, not really overseeing them, but get, let them get on with, it, with the, the heating. And I had a ping on my phone. And it's Steve Ball is preaching tomorrow. And I thought, oh my goodness. No, that's next week. Yeah, I'm sure I'm right. But I thought I'd better ring. And yes, he was due to speak today. So a thousand apologies to you, Steve. And uh, he insisted that, you know, um, to carry on. And, and he's come over as well. Isn't that great? He says he loves coming here. So give him a big round of applause. And I, just to make up, I'm going to take them out for lunch. <laughs> so we put, we've got... <laughs> We've we got a table booked at McDonald's, so we're, we're looking. I am joking, joking. Oh, fabulous. Absolutely joking. But welcome, Steve and uh, Helen as well. Welcome to Ben and Emily and Amira Joy Mortar. Congratulations on your beautiful baby. Look at that. Def she, oh, oh, look at him. He's going, shh. Yeah. Like you've done the night shift yet, have you, through the night? No, no. Oh, dear. Well, welcome anyway, and uh, it's great to have you here, it really is. We've got somebody else here for the first time. Amelia from Australia. What part was it? Queensland? Queensland, give her a big warm welcome. <laughs> Fabulous. Which it makes it a little bit awkward, because she comes especially to hear you, Steve. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm sure she'd love to hear you. But Steve reassures me, after Easter, he's coming back. And, uh, dear, oh dear, I'm going to be in detention, I think. And also, we've got some uh, Simeon, I can't say, Simeonette, something like that, and Gabriel, your son, from Peru. Is that correct? Welcome them as well. <laughs> Friends of Wendy and Leo, it's great to see you as well. Should we just stand? We're going to have our epic praise in just a moment. Should we just stand together and uh, pray? Father, we bless you, and we love you, and we thank you, Lord, that you're perfect. You never make a mistake, and you want and desire to encourage us today and to bless us and to speak into our hearts. And I pray you'll do just that today. I pray you will bless these amazing children. I pray that you will bless those watching on the live stream. And I pray for all of us who have come together and to worship you and to fellowship uh, one with the other in your presence this morning. I pray you'll bless us. You'll fire us up. You'll encourage us and spur us on, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, good morning, Epic. You're welcome to come and grab an instrument to join in. And also, that extends for anyone else as well who wants to have a bit of percussion to express themselves. While we worship, you're more than welcome to come and grab something down here. We've got maracas, we've got tambourines, we've got the whole orchestra down here. So come, <laughs> so come and grab something if you want to. There you go. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, because it's nice to express ourselves, isn't it, in worship? There we go. 
Has Alfie got more than one thing there? I think he might have. <laughs> He's got a combination of things, bless him. He's right. Moi tan. He'll be one of those guys with the harmonica and the thing. and the, There you go. Lovely. All right. Father God, we thank you that this morning we can worship you freely. We thank you, Lord, that we have that privilege and that freedom this morning. We bless you, Lord. We worship you this morning. You are the word of God the Father. You might have heard this one, kids. It's a lovely song. What a word. You're the word of God the Father. From before the world began, every star and every planet has been fashioned by your hand. All creation holds together by the power of your voice. Let the skies declare your glory, let the land and seas rejoice. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out across the land. Left the gaze of angels, came to seek and save the lost, and exchanged the joy of heaven from the anguish of a cross. With a prayer you fed the hungry, with a word you fed the sea, yet I'll silently suffer that the guilty may go free. Shout, here we go. With a shout, you will speak. Oh, yeah. Blessing victory from the grave and ascending into heaven, leaving captives in your way. Now you stand before the Father, interceding for your own from each tribe and tongue and nation. You are leaving sin. love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain, firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love can... Here we go! Hallelujah! 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 Your love is surprising, I can feel it rising, all the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through, I can feel this God song. Here we go! Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, your love makes me sing your love. Cause your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Oh, hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all are amazed. One more time. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Thank you guys. Go and have a great session. The Lord bless you. And uh, have a great time today. Praise God. You can take your seats now. Can you hear me? No. Oh my goodness. It's like the spaceship landed there. Eh? Fantastic. We can have some notices now. Uh, just to say, there is no mums and toddlers this week or HBC on Friday because it's half term. But that was amazing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And thank you, prayer team, uh, yeah. prayer chain. Yeah. Did you mention that? Yeah. You did. Sorry. And any time you've got a, a real prayer request, please contact myself or Sarah and we'll you know, we can put it on the prayer chain. Oh, that was amazing. That yeah. touched my heart. And I know that you were beside yourself. Very tearful Friday. And you were praying and we were praying on Friday. And thank you to those who were in that loop. Oh, it was amazing. Ain't God wonderful? He can do things. So much bad news in the world today. But we got some good news this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we give you thanks for that. Okay, just to give you some notices. Um, Making a noise. Is that because I'm too near that one? I'll put that one over there for just a second. Okay, there's, so there's no toddlers this week or HBC. Tuesday is Friendship Hour, 2 p.m. Can I encourage you to come along to that? <laughs> Shall I turn this one off a minute? <laughs> okay, should I just turn my radio and my coffee and just use this one for now? Is that Praise the Lord. There you go. So uh, where was I? Friendship Hour. <laughs> They really do have a great time on, on Tuesdays. I went there uh, last Tuesday, and I, and I was really blessed and encouraged. I really appreciated it. And it is a really good time to come along. Uh, they have time of worship, a time, a time of coming around the world, uh, the word, uh, a time of um, reports of thanksgiving, etc., And also a lovely fellowship afterwards as well. And I want to pay tribute to, to Trevor and Maureen and uh, Yvonne as well, works in the kitchen, and Sylvia and Tony who play and everyone who's involved there. Well done to you. It's absolutely brilliant. I won't be there Tuesday because I've got to be involved in a, a funeral um, on Tuesday in City Road, but I will be there the following Tuesday. And that, Maureen, I reassure you, is not just for the cakes. All right. Is it a draw? Yes, it is a little bit, to be honest with you. It's a, they work so hard, but I'm, do you know what? I'm going to go there because I really enjoy that. I can just put all my work to one side. I'm normally upstairs working, but I came down. And do you know, I went away refreshed from that. I really enjoyed that. So, uh, yeah, give them a big man of all. Thank you for that. Thank you for your faithfulness and your commitment. Uh, Peter Kiernan will be speaking on Tuesday, and there's a certain individual who's going to be singing. Not me, you'll be pleased to know. Uh, it's Josh, you're singing on Tuesday, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, they're clapping you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, no doubt. He's quite pushy, isn't he? <laughs> He's not slow in coming forward, is Josh? But I'm sure you're going to be blessed. Absolutely. What is, she's not here this morning, but it's Becca's birthday yesterday. So, a massive happy birthday. I don't know if you're watching on the live stream. Happy birthday to you yesterday. Wednesday is our prayer, uh, which is on Zoom from 7 p.m. onwards. If you'd like to come on that, see Sarah. Hash group, house group on Fridays. Um, speak to Martin or John. Thursday, Thursday sorry. Uh, that's at 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. I did give out the address last time, but I don't think I'm not allowed to do certain things over live stream, so I, I did forget that, so sorry about that. Uh, see John and Martin, and on Friday, no HBC. I'm going to do a Bible reading, but just before that, Rachel Lee, you're going to come up and just share just a second. Let's give her a big round of applause as she comes up. Very, very, very quickly. It, um, just to remind you about the quiz on the 9th of March. It's our charity quiz. It's our annual event. Wonderful time to invite friends and family. I'm going to be stood at the back at the end, so if you want to sign up, Please do. It's a wonderful opportunity to raise funds for the amazing uh, work we do in Romania for the summer camp for those children and sharing the gospel with them. So 9th of March, Saturday night, 
Um, do come along and bring your friends and family. Thank you very much. There you go. Looking forward to that. I'm getting in training for that. I'm going to a quiz on Tuesday at the Blue Ball. Oh. I think Lucy's doing a quiz, aren't you, Lucy? Oh, she's out there. She's doing a singing quiz. Nice. Something like that. And uh, to raise money for her, part of the, to go out there or whatever. So uh, I'm in training this year. I'm fed up with that wooden spoon. I've got enough. <laughs> I've got enough of them already. I'm going for gold this year, so you better watch out. So, uh, yeah, I know. Oh, yes, I am. We know that's not strictly true. But let's, um, we're just going to have the word of God, and then we're going to get into a time of worship. And just let's just lose. Can I encourage you to lose yourself in the worship this morning? Forget the things of the world, things that are going on, the pressure points in your life today, and just focus on him. Amen? Amen. And be that audience of one this morning and just worship him. And then we're going to come around the, bo- uh, the, the word with Bob this morning. But Bob has asked me to, um, to read some scripture to you. It's from the, the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. It was supposed to be from verses 1, but I looked at some of the words and had a conversation with Bob as if we could skip them. (laughs) Verse 3 then. Every year this man went from his own town up to Shiloh to worship and offer a sacrifice to God of the angel armies. Eli and his two sons, Hopini, Phinehas, there's some difficult names there, served as the priest of God there when Elkanah sacrificed and he passed helpings from the sacrificial meal to his wife, Penena, and all her children. But he always gave an especially generous helping to Hannah because he loved her so much and because God had not given her children. But her rival wife taunted her, cruelly rubbing it in and never letting her forget that God had not given her children. This went on year after year. And every time she went to the sanctuary of God, she could expect to be taunted. Hannah was reduced to tears and had no appetite. Her husband said, Oh, Hannah, why are you crying? Why aren't you eating? And why are you so upset? Am I not of more worth to you than ten sons? So Hannah ate. Then she pulled herself together, slipped away quietly, and entered the sanctuary. The priest Eli was on duty at the entrance of God's temple in the customary seat, crushed in soul, Hannah prayed to God and cried and cried inconsolably, then made a vow. O God of the angel armies, if you take a good hard look at my pain, if you quit neglecting me and go into action for me by giving me a son, I'll give him completely, unreservedly to you. I'll set him apart for a life of holy discipline. It so happened that as she continued in prayer before God, Eli was watching her closely. Hannah was praying in her heart silently. Her lips moved, but no sound was heard. Eli jumped to the conclusion that she was drunk. He approached her and said, you're drunk. How long do you plan to keep this up? Sober up, woman. Hannah said, oh, no, sir, please. I'm a wo- I am a woman broken hearted. I haven't been drinking, not a drop of wine or beer. The only thing I've been pouring out is my heart. Pouring it out to God. Don't for a minute think I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy and in such pain that I've stayed here so long. Eli answered her, go in peace. And may the God of Israel give you what you have asked for. Think well of me and pray for me, she said, and went her way. Then she ate heartedly, her face radiant, up before dawn, they worshipped God and returned to Ramah. Ikalana, sorry, Elkanah, sorry, it's terrible pronunciation, slept with Hannah, his wife, and began making the necessary arrangements in response to what she had asked. Before the year was out, Hannah conceived and given birth to a son, and she named him Samuel, explaining, I asked God for him. May the Lord add his blessing to his word. Amen. Let's worship him now. Let's just put everything down at his feet, shall we? And just really come together. Lord, we thank you so much that we have this time and this privilege to just honor you, worship you together as a family, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that we can honor you this way. We just want to enjoy your presence this morning, Father. You are so good to us, Lord.
skies of all men will be fixed on the land who was crucified. With wisdom and mercy and justice, you're in the Father's side. And the angels will cry. Who was slain for the
of my heart Either fire beside my veins Or the echo of my days Yeah! You are good, good Let's enter that inner throne room. Let's enter the inner court right now. He invites us in. He invites us in. Jesus, Jesus.
Jesus. One of the greatest images God ever gave me was when he showed, he showed me himself dancing. He wasn't just sat at his throne, but he was dancing with joy. When we worship him, when we commune with him. Yes, we serve an almighty God, but God wants to rejoice with us. He's not a statue that you bow and worship at. He's a living God with fire for a heart. Jesus, you're amazing, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry and these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Let's declare it now. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry and these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord? Just declare, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. Shout your praise. Ah. 
hearts will cry. These bones are still Thank you. 
I know.
us, Father. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yes. God, we want to thank you that you use us as vessels for your love, for your work, for the action that you just want us to do. So I just pray, Lord, that whatever you place on our hearts, we would just do. That we won't question, we would just do. And I do thank you, Lord, that that, um, that dear woman just rang Sarah and said, I know, I know that you pray. I know that you pray. Please pray. Father, we just pray that we will be shining lights for you in this place so that people do know that we are part of your body, the church. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah. Beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit this morning. Jesus. We thank you for your presence, Lord. May we soak in your presence. Wash over us. Fill us. Renew us. Revive us. Restore us, Lord, afresh. Renew our hearts and our minds. Oh, you're so beautiful, Jesus. And we're so grateful for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you're doing amongst us, your people, in our hearts and in our lives. And we do thank you that it's been so beautifully prayed already. Thank you for that, saving that child's life, Lord. To be honest, I was dreading the outcome, Lord. It didn't look, look very dark, but Father, we trusted you, as we all do. And you are amazing, hallelujah. You are so amazing, so incredible. Thank you, Jesus. We do pray for the salvation of that family, that lady and the, the son and, and, and those who are connected to that. And the toddlers, Lord, move by your spirit in our lives, in our family's lives. But move amongst our community as well here, Lord. We want to bring, we want to see you bring new people in here to find you. Hallelujah. Because it's all about you, Lord, isn't it? Amen. It's all about you, Jesus. You're precious. And it just blows me away that we can just come into your presence. It blows me away how much you love us. And you're keen to take care of our every need. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, I pray for all my brothers and sisters here now. Things that they face are contending with. I just pray they know your strength afresh. And Lord, I pray that they will remember you. Hallelujah. How could we ever forget you, Lord? But we are human sometimes, but we just press in afresh today. Trust in you, almighty God. Hallelujah. You're our source of strength, peace, grace, and joy. Hallelujah. Fill our hearts, Lord, in this dark world where the news is so negative, Father. I just pray that we would experience fresh joy, fresh fire within our hearts, a fresh touch from you. So indeed, Lord, we do pray now that you will prepare our hearts to not only hear your word, but receive it and learn from it and be doers of your word. Bless Bob, Lord. We thank you for his life, his testimony, his ministry. And I pray, Lord, as he comes now and brings your precious word, that it will speak into our hearts. And may your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. That was, wasn't that beautiful? Thank you, team. Thank you. Very conscious of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Praise the Lord.
It's really powerful, isn't it, this morning? The Holy Spirit at work. And I think we've, probably most of us have been really so blessed. (laughs) How much more can we take this morning, really? God is good. But I I do have uh, a word I'd like to share with you this morning. It's a word that um, God's been just um, deepening within me um, over these these last days and weeks. And... um, it's, uh, it's, it's about the, the fact that God uh, remembers. God remembers. And what I want to do this morning is to just share something from God's Word, just to show us how much He remembers and remembers us. Amen. Memory is a, it is a gift. And... Um, but the gift, this gift of memory, uh, can be different experience, you know, for, for all of us, really. There are many different ways that we remember. Um, I must say, um, I'm a bit envious of, of those people who have such an excellent memory, even a photographic memory. You know, it's just incredible. I've seen um, um, artists who can just be shown, you know, a, a cityscape you know, with, with huge detail in it, for just a few minutes, and then they can go away somewhere else and they can produce, produce that image. It's, it's just incredible memory. Um, what's your memory like, dare I ask? <laughs> dare I ask? Um, let's, let's, let's hope it's reasonable. <clears throat> uh, but maybe it's poor, it's not, not all, all that it, it used to be. Now, the, the weird thing is that we can be maybe a bit unclear about what happened yesterday or maybe even earlier today, but we, but we can remember way back, school days, college days, you know, maybe for those that are married, getting married, you know, hopefully you do remember that one. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we can sometimes remember more things in the past than we can in the present, which is, 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 is that, that's the way it is. Um, uh, memories um, can be awoken as well, and this is uh, just a, bu- a beautiful thing, really, providing the memories are, are, are good memories. Um, have any of you been to reunions? Have you been to a reunion? Hands up this morning if you've been to a re- Yes, a few of you have been to reunions. The rest of you are far too young to, to even be invited to a reunion, I guess. But, um, <clears throat> but at a reunion, all the old stories come out, and people remember different things that happened that you maybe have you know, are forgotten about, and it sort of kindles those, those memories. Um, a wedding is also a great place to have uh, memories uh, stirred, and uh, sometimes it's looking back at when the adults were children and the things they got up to. Um, so, um, and also even, even at uh, wakes, you know, there, there's a sharing, a, a rich sharing of, of someone's life and the memories associated with the one who's, who's passed on. So we can sometimes store our memories in other ways, other than just relying on our brains to do it for us. Um, some people have that discipline of keep, keeping a diary. Have we anybody here this morning who, who would like to admit that you, you keep a diary? There we are. We've got, a, we've got, we've got two or three. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. Um, to do, and um, maybe a, a journal. Uh, journals are becoming quite popular now. It's a way of just just recording uh, what's going on, and maybe your relationship with the Lord. Photograph albums, probably up in the loft somewhere, uh, hidden away. Maybe it's time to get out the old photograph album and and uh, kindle those those memories. Um, of course, nowadays it's a lot of it's on social media, isn't it? In fact. You know, Facebook tells you stuff. You know, did you know 10 years ago you were doing this and five years ago you were doing that? This is how you looked then and this is what, how you, what you wore. You know, it's, that's social media trying to get in on the act. So memory, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great gift. So what does God remember? The key thing I want to um, put over this morning, and if you don't take anything else from what I'm saying... If you can just remember this, you are not forgotten. 
Some of you might think you are, so I'm going to say it again. You are not forgotten. And we're going to, um, we're going to look at some, some stories very briefly this morning just to, to illustrate the fact that God does not forget about us. And also, um, we do need the reminder from time to time. We maybe don't need it all the time, but from time to time we need to be reminded uh, of, of God, that he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. But also, God chooses when to remind us. And this is, this is very, very interesting. And I'm going to share these little um, cameos um, of people in the, the Old Testament, just four of them. Um, and um, it's going to, to, to show us uh, how God chooses the moment when he reveals himself to us. So um, I've discovered uh, four people in the Old Testament who God uh, specifically remembered. And um, there, are two, there, there are two features, two, two things I noticed about these uh, divine memory nudges, as I'm going to call it, all right? When you get a bit of a, a memory nudge. But God is doing this. The first thing is that each remembrance takes place during the most challenging of circumstances and trials. These are the moments that God reminds us who he is and who we are. It's not on our summer holiday picnic days. We, we enjoy God's presence, of course, and we, we're aware of him, but it's it's in these other days that God can speak so powerfully into our lives. And the other interesting uh, thing that I've, uh, I've, I've seen as I've looked at these stories and read them through again and again is that God's remembrance um, was followed by a sign, by an intervention, by a breakthrough. It came straight away. Okay, so God, God came as a, a God who, who reminded reminded us of who he is, and that reminder brought this breakthrough. And I'm excited about that, and I, I hope you are as well, because, uh, you know, we need breakthroughs, don't we? We need a breakthrough. Maybe it's some small area we feel it's not that important, but it needs a breakthrough. And I'm trusting that even as we, we look at this this morning, I believe the Spirit of God, even before I opened this, the Bible, God is, is showing that there are breakthroughs for people this morning. You, maybe you've already experienced it. Right now, the Holy Spirit is on you, and you're experiencing that new thinking, that, uh, that, that spirit of renewal that the prophecy uh, shared this morning. Okay, so I spotted the first of my four heroes in, um, in a, a, a teaching series called the Joseph Series. Now, I don't know if you've uh, passed, the, you may remember, you, you, you're, you may remember this, um, that in the, the, the Joseph series that Pastor Ryan is taking us through at the moment, um, there's a, a just the, these two words jumped out of the page when I saw them, probably saw them maybe on the screen, but it just jumped out of the page and it said, God remembered. Okay, and we're going we're gonna to look at that now. So, um, uh, first of all, um, we're going to look um, at Rachel, which is the story connected, uh, obviously, with, with Joseph. Um, just taking you back to the day that she was out. This is um, uh, Rachel was out uh, with her, her flock of sheep, minding her own business. It was like any other day. And she had to take them to the well to get them watered. Um, but there's a man um, standing there near the well. And this was uh, Jacob. Now Jacob had been told to, um, to go and find a wife, but make sure that this wife is part of their family community. Okay. Um, Esau, his, his brother, I think he'd gone off and done some things that weren't very pleasing. And so... Um, Rachel meets, meets Jacob. He uh, 
he does the, the sort of the manly thing and he, he pushes the stone that's blocking the, the, the well, pushes it to one side, he draws her the water and he, he feeds the sheep uh, for her. But there's something going on um, as they sort of, as, as she watches him and, and, and he uh, does this job and then they, they look at each other and um, he t- tells her who he is and they realize that they're part of this, the, the, the same family uh, community. In fact, um, uh, Laban um, is his uh, father. So, um, just get back to Jacob. Jacob is, is uh, received by um, Rachel. She, um, he, in fact, he's overwhelmed. He, he kisses her, he cries out, he's just, just some connection taking place with this, this young woman, this young uh, shepherdess. So they, they rush back to, to the house, and um, her father comes out to, to greet Jacob. And it's just a great time of, of reunion and interaction. Um, and he agrees to sort of stay around for a month to, you know, it, it, such is the welcome that, that he's given. So he, he stays around. Uh, but during this time, something's happening in his heart when he, every time he looks at Rachel... Can you imagine what that was? Um, he's falling in love. And um, by the way, Valentine's Day this week, just, just a little reminder for those who, who, who might have slipped your memory. So this, this is the love story, that, all right, for, for, for Valentine. Um, so <clears throat> he's falling in love, and so he talks to uh, her father, to, to, to Laban, and, um, and uh, says, uh, I am falling in love with your daughter. Um, I want to marry her. Um, what is the price I have to pay? It was known as the bride price. Okay, and this was sort of expected that the, uh, the husband in this case would, um, would, would pay uh, a, a large sum of money to the, the, the bride's father, the bride Price. He got a bit of a shock because um, rather than in sort of direct cash or, or money, um, he asked Jacob to work with him for seven years. We know this story. Seven years would be the bride price, and so that all that labor, all that effort um, would, be, would be put in. Um, so the seven years, we move on quickly, seven years complete. Uh, and then the marriage takes place, um, uh, it, and it's a, an evening situation, and uh, the, the, the bride and groom disappear off. And um, the next morning is this awful shock, big surprise, first day married, uh, it's the wrong woman. Um, of course, um, he's been deceived, he's been given Leah. Okay, always keep a torch handy. It's it's you know <laughs> might be useful. <laughs> so this is pretty pretty bad news um, for uh, for Jacob and uh, and for Rachel as well, who I'm sure was in absolute tears and uh, aggrieved about what her father had done. So um, there's conversations take place, um, and um, Rachel. Um, Rachel is allowed to also to, to marry um, Jacob, but it's going to take another seven years um, of work um, to do that. But she, she, they do marry, and so um, Jacob ends up with two wives. It's all in the Bible. Um, uh, and um, what happens, though, in the coming, in the coming years, the, those, those years, is that um, Leah... She gives birth to um, six sons and a daughter, so she's having lots of children. Whereas Rachel, nothing. She's unable to conceive and uh, becomes a desperate situation for her. She cries out, give me children or I'll die. Sounds like she's thinking about taking her life. It's that deep, the hurt and the pain in her own life. And it's maybe something that some folks here this morning have, have experienced. And it's a, a very difficult time. Um, in fact, in this country, at the moment, one in seven couples 
have problems with fertility. It's, it's, it's a big issue, and uh, there's a need for a lot of love and compassion and care and understanding. So, dear Rachel, she's mocked, she's shamed by Leah. Leah just doesn't treat her well at all, and she's desperate to have a family. So I'm going to now just read a, a couple of verses uh, from Genesis. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> Okay, and here we go. This is, this is one of the key, key verses, uh, Jeremiah 30, Ge- sorry, Genesis 30. Then God remembered Rachel. So all that we've been talking about has been going on. God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and opened her womb. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and said, God has taken away my disgrace. She named him Joseph and said, may the Lord add to me another son. So she she was on a bit of a roll here, wasn't she? She was sort of, um, she'd got the son that she longed for and she she prayed for another one. And so um, we see how how God spoke in in those circumstances. He spoke during the difficult, dark days when she could have even taken her life. God intervened. God remembered Rachel. And what was the sign? The the birth of a son was the sign. That was the sign. God uh, God had remembered her. Okay, our next next, um, person that we want to look at um, briefly is is Hannah. Got some similarities with the story of of Rachel, but Hannah, as as we had in the the reading, and thank you for for that, Ryan, from the message version, um, was Hannah who was married to Elkanah, but uh, <coughs> Elkanah was also married to Penina. And so there were two, there's a situation of two wives in this household. Um, Hannah was loved very much by Elkanah, but was infertile. Whereas the other wife, as you can guess, she had lots of children. In fact, I think it was 10 children she had. Uh, uh, Penina was not helpful at all in the situation. Uh, she provoked Hannah. She irritated Hannah. Uh, it, the Bible says that she wept constantly. She missed meals. You know, she's in a real state, a real difficult time, um, probably with depression, um, and um, Elkanah, um, Elkanah loved her and did his best. But sometimes, you know, us blokes, we can, we can sort of not really do the right thing at the right time. Um, and um, in Samuel, let me just pick this one up here. Um, yeah. 19. Okay. And... Um, yeah, so, so every, every year the family went up to Shiloh to make offerings to the Lord. And, um, and Hannah, she f- felt in, in, in a desperation that she should make a special vow to the priest. And so she promised that if God would give her a son, that that son would be dedicated to the Lord in the, and work with uh, Eli in the temple. And we, we know that part of the story and what came from that. Um, and so we see um, in 1 Samuel, we, we read, um, early next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. There's another one you see. There's, there's four of these. The Lord remembered her. Um, in, so in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Okay. So, you know, with this, this, this story out of this very difficult uh, time, um, uh, Samuel is born, and we know the importance of Samuel, who becomes a prophet 
and a prophet to anoint a king, King David. And, you know, it all came out of this experience. God remembered Hannah. Okay, uh, third one is um, Abraham. Maybe no surprise, uh, because Abraham had such a a close relationship uh, with God. Um, But let me just just read a couple of verses here. Um, Right, um, this is the call of Abraham. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Um, This was an amazing call upon this man's life. Um, It's a a well-known story uh, from the Bible. Um, But Abraham faced many challenges, as as we know. We know he was a man of faith, but he still had these these big challenges in his life. Um, uh, His his wife, again, was infertile. This is Sarah. Um, And um, that was a problem because God had said, you know, you're going to, your descendants are going to be like the, 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 the stars in the sky. I mean, you know, the, the, the sand on the beach. You're going to have so many, so many children and, and your descendants are going to be so many. And here's Abraham with his, his dear wife, Sarah, struggling to even get their first child. And um, so the other problems were there was um, a sort of a confusion, really, I think, as to how on earth are we going to get... Um, God's word uh, completed. How, how are we going to get that done? And so um, Abraham uh, fathers children to the maid, Hagar, and uh, Ishmael is born. And that's a whole other story. Um, but he's not really the son of promise, is he? There were lots of family issues at this time with a, um, a renegade nephew I don't know if you've got any renegade nephews in your family, <laughs> but this, this uh, renegade um, nephew called Lot caused a right lot of, of, uh, of, of, of upset and annoyance, and um, uh, Abraham had to go and rescue him from these, these people that were, were far away, and they, they didn't really follow God, God's way, and he, he was getting involved in all this other stuff, he had to go and rescue him, and and. And then the, the last thing was um, when God was bringing judgment upon the people of Sodom, uh, that fiery judgment was coming that um, Abraham managed to escape, but he also man- just about managed to get Lot out as well to safety. So all these difficult problems. And then we can read um, in, again in, in, in Genesis... Um, Read the verse now. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that's the of, of the Sodom. When God destroyed the cities of the plain, He remembered Abraham. You see, it's there. There's another one. He remembered Abraham, and He brought Lot out of the catastrophe that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. And so um, this is this is God's moment of remembrance. And uh, what, is the, what is the sign of this? Well, Sarah, Sarah gets pregnant and Isaac is born. This breakthrough, uh, finally, after all the, the difficulties. I'm not saying that was the, the end of their difficulties, but they'd, they'd certainly gone through a lot of things uh, up until this point. Okay, so how are we doing? Right, we're on number four already. You'll be relieved to know. Um, and we're going back even further in time here. Uh, we're going to uh, look at Noah. Uh, and I want you to think for a minute about life on board the ark. Now, on the TV, there's a lot of ads for cruise, cruise ships. And you go everywhere. You can go to the Arctic. You can go Antarctic. You can, you can go everywhere. You can go to the fields. and It all looks lovely, doesn't it? Until you see the price. Um, <clears throat> but... Um, this, this experience of the ark was no cruise ship. What was it like? What, 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 you know, what was it like? I mean, 
you know, um, they, they weren't getting off and stopping over and visiting places of interest, or um, they, uh, they, there were no invites to the captain's table. I, I don't see that in the Bible. Uh, they were in this huge, huge um, ark, okay? It was like a big, huge container. It was just a rectangle bobbing along uh, in the water. Um, it, it, it was horrendous. I mean, just, just, just think about it. You know, think about what, what was it like. Okay, they were so alive, okay? Um, but the turmoil, the chaos, the darkness, the smell. I mean, those, all those lovely animals that went in two by two. I mean, they were, you know, <clears throat> life had to go on. <laughs> um, and so there was, there was a, it was a very traumatic at time and for 40 days and nights the 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 uh, the heavens opened and it, it rained and it was 150 days it says in the scriptures that the, the flood was upon the land will this ever end they cried um well i've got another scripture here uh okay genesis here we go genesis 8 but god remembered noah that's the fourth one you see there's another one there you, you might spot some more when you're reading. So, oh, there's one of Bob's uh, God Remembered. Anyway, the, the, there aren't that many, um, I, I can assure you. God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. So God remembers Noah, um, and there's a sign. What was the sign? It was the wind, the wind that came over the earth. It says, God sent a wind over the earth. This was their breakthrough. This is, times are changing. With, you know, the days of the flood are coming to an end. And this wind was a sign that, that God was bringing that, that judgment upon the earth to an end. God spoke in the midst of chaos and turmoil he gave a sign. He, he, he remembered Noah and he gave a sign um, of, of, of the wind. It's symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And this is how God wants to move in our lives. He wants to speak to us. He wants to show that he remembers us and that call that he's placed on our lives, the gifts that he's given to us, all the gifts, not just some of the gifts, all the gifts that God has given to us, he wants to anoint he wants to bring breakthrough. He wants um, us to, to serve him in a new spirit. So, um, just to sort of bring this to a conclusion, um, God remembers. When does God remember? It's at the height of the storm. So don't be surprised. You know, in fact, your cry, you know, your cry is heard by God. God remembers when all looks hopeless. What a wonderful miracle, this, this young infant. When all looks hopeless, God remembers. Hallelujah. Barrenness gives way to fruitfulness. That's so evident in these stories. Not just the having of children, but um, barrenness in other areas of our lives. I think we've all got areas, you know, if, if our lives were like gardens, some of it would be quite nice and pretty and doing well. Some parts in dark corners, a bit, bit abandoned, you know, throw the grass clippings over it, you know. But God wants to bring forth fruitfulness. It's, that, it's right through the Bible, that fruitfulness, right from Adam and Eve. Fruitfulness, all, all the way through the Bible. And Jesus, what did he say? He said, I want you to bear fruit. I want you to have much fruit, he said to his disciples. And, and he also, God remembers because he loves us. Because he loves us. Hallelujah. Let me just, just, just read. I think this is our last scripture. Um, God loves us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, 
For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, say it again, not the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, the God who remembers, the God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we just rejoice to experience the moving of your spirit this morning in this meeting. We thank you, Father, for the divine appointments, Lord, that we are each placed here by by your purpose, Lord, your plan, your purpose. And we just thank you so much, Lord, for all that we've, we've received through the worship, through testimonies, just through that very strong sense of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, for the reminder from, from the Scriptures, Lord, about you moving upon the lives of people who became very important, people who were, were servants of you, and how you moved through their difficult circumstances, even through the tragedies of life, to bring forth fruit. Lord, I pray your Spirit will continue to be with us and to uh, move us into that fruitful place in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bless you. Wasn't that great this morning? Praise you. Are you glad you come to church this morning? Amen. I am too. That was a real blessing. Everybody, you all right, John? Jesus. And my thought was, I pray yes, that the Lord will remember them. Hallelujah. And that they will be brought up. And Amen. When they have no idea of what's going on, that the Lord will remember them. Amen. Now, Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's, I tell you, on that note, let's just pray for those children. And all the children's here. Amen. Thank you for that, John. Appreciate you sharing that. Father God, we do pray, Jesus, hallelujah, for divine provision and divine protection over those children. And all the days of their lives, they will know your provision and protection. And Father, that they will come to a full knowledge and understanding of your loving grace. And they will know the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but I pray a, a prayer further, Lord, that you will use them for your kingdom, that you will use them for your glory and raise them up for such a time is it, for such a time as this. But when it's their time, I pray that you will use them in the fullness of your Holy Spirit. Amen. That was lovely. Thanks for sharing that, John. That was great this morning. I really do appreciate that, Bob. And that was great how you, uh, great how God remembers us. And I really like that point about the wind with Noah. I've never seen it like that before. And that's what we need again. And we pray that God will remember the the wind and the move of the Holy Spirit here. Amen. Amen. And wherever we go. I did get convicted a little bit at times about when you mentioned diaries and memories. And uh, so, uh, but thankfully we've got a very gracious superintendent there, regional superintendent, but we're going to have Steve back with us soon. So, um, that was great. So please don't run off today. As always, we got lovely refreshments for you, some coffees and teas, and you might even have some nibbles as well. So I've really enjoyed this, uh, this, this this morning. Isn't that beautiful this morning, the worship? Should we give them a big hand? Let's stand together. Rob, would you lead us and worship the Lord? And uh, you can end in prayer as well. That would sure. be great. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, let's end on what we've already just done this morning because I love it. All the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing, great are you, Lord. Just declare it. All the earth will shout your praise.
will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, his bones will sing. for how great you are God and that you always remember your promises are true Lord we thank you this week we can live for you Lord we know that you are there with us we thank you Father God help us to keep you at the center of it Amen bless you Lord that I've got a prayer request on Tuesday I've got a six minute slot in in a, a funeral in, in City Road in, in St. Paul's, in the Baptist Church there. And uh, it's a friend of mine who, who's something I don't know, but in, they want me to be part of it. And there's going to be hundreds from what was the Empire Sports Club in Bristol, the old gym. And I mean, there's going to be hundreds there who may not know the Lord, probably do not know the Lord. So within that six minutes, I've got to speak well of my friend, but I want to bring the gospel in there. And I pray... And it's all scheduled to time with, with these places. So I pray that I will get that time so I can speak well of my friend, but also can preach the gospel. Would you pray? It's Tuesday morning at 10.45. I appreciate if you were prayer. Bless you. Have a great week. God bless. Thanks, Rob. Thanks.